Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. This is where I take a deep dive into a particular creator or a product or a magic dealer or a producer. And I kind of just uh, <laughs> examine their product range. Now, this is the third review show special that I'm doing on Alakazam Magic. And I didn't actually intend to do another review show special so early on. The reason I'm doing this is because over the last few weeks, Alakazam have brought out so many tricks. Uh, the only way I can literally catch up is by doing a review show special. Their output is incredible right now, and a lot of the stuff that they're bringing out is just exceptional. I don't know if you've seen the Beyond the Stebbins project. That's an example of something that Alakazam have brought out that's just simply off the charts good. Um, I might be biased, to be honest. But this is a Alakazam review show special, and I'm going to be looking at four products. I'm going to be looking at two Alakazam products that they've only just recently bought out. And I'm going to be bring, looking at two products from Ace Magic Studio. Now, for those of you that don't know, Ace Magic Studio, and I did do a review show special ages ago on Ace Magic Studio, uh, Gary Stumpter. They, uh, they are now part of Alakazam. So although they're, own, they're their own entity, they're part of the Alakazam family. So when an Ace Magic Studio product comes out, it's branded as part of Alakazam. So two of the tricks that I'm going to be looking at are uh, Ace Magic Studios. The other two are going to be directly with Alakazam, but basically all four of these are Alakazam products. They're all brand new and they're all kind of really interesting and all the, the kind of really different as well. So uh, the format's going to be exactly the same. I'm going to look at the trick. I'm going to give you a full performance and I'm going to tell you what I think. So without further ado, let's have a look at the first product on this week's review show special. So the first thing that I'm going to be looking at this week is Fright Night by Peter Nardi and Andy Lyman. Now, this is something that I am very aware of. And the reason is I spoke to Pete Nardi about this months and months and months ago. And I, I was having a Zoom call with him and uh, Andy Nyman's name came up specifically about Killer Elite. Now, if you don't know what Killer Elite is, Killer Elite is an Andy Nyman trick bought out many, many years ago. The original Killer Elite was in an envelope and then they bought out uh, Killer Elite Pro, which was in a custom designed uh, sort of little wallet. And I have done this trick for years. It's all based around films. I love films, I'm a film buff. It's all based around serial killers in films. And the whole idea is that you tell this story about four serial killers that are in the same room and the audience decides which one of the serial killers is the survivor. It's a classic routine. Now, what Peter and Alec Azam have done is they have reimagined this trick and they've brought out a new version. It's called Fright Night and it's specifically about horror movie characters. And uh, the four horror movie characters that we have in this uh, particular version of the trick are, in my opinion, and I'm a big horror, horror film fan, uh, they're the most iconic characters in the horror movie genre. You have uh, Leatherface from Chainsaw Massacre, you have Jason, you have Michael Myers, and you have Freddy Krueger. So you have you have the four most iconic characters. I think the only thing they're missing is Ghostface from Scream. If they had that, they'd have five, but then maybe the trick wouldn't work as well. But um, the, these four characters, what's interesting is even if you aren't a horror movie fan, even if you aren't a fan of horror movie films, you're going to know who these characters are. They're just iconic. They're pop culture at this point. The actual trick, the methodology behind the trick, kind of remains the same uh, with a few tweaks. The props have been massively updated and uh, the props have changed in order to fit the new theme. So, for example, in the original Killer Elite, you've got a poker chip which kind of made sense with Andy's original presentation of the winner holding the lucky poker chip. Uh, in this version, you've got a membership card uh, because the presentation of this is that you collect movie posters and uh, you're, you're a member of this club that you can collect movie posters from and you get new movie posters every single month. And these are your four favorite movie posters. And that's kind of how you go into it. Uh, if you haven't seen uh, Fright Night before, I'm going to do a full performance uh, of it. I'm going to do a full performance on Jack. Jack is a horror movie nerd, even more so than me. So I'm going to perform this on Jack, and then we'll talk about what I think. 
What I have here is a little wallet. It's not really about the wallet, it's about what's inside. First of all, I have my membership card because I'm a member of the Movie Poster Collectors Club. Um, and if you ever come around my house, you'll see lots and lots of movie posters. And I also have some cards here. And these cards are from um, different horror movies. But they are the four most iconic killers from horror movie genre of all time. And as a horror movie fan, I think you'll agree with me, but you can check it out. You've got Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We've got Friday the 13th, which is obviously... Jason. There you go. We've got Halloween. Michael, Michael Myers. Myers. And finally, we have Freddy from the Nightmare on Elm Street series. I think the only thing missing is Scream, but I think we've got a really good collection of There's killers there. Movies, do, yeah. do you agree? <laughs> now, here's the thing. I want you to use your imagination, and we're going to put together a little story, and you're going to come up with the finale of the story. I want you to imagine that uh, you leave work, okay, and you're going to walk home, uh, but the buses and the trains have all been cancelled. And so you're walking home, and then you realise that if you cut through this graveyard, it's going to save you 30 minutes off your journey. But by this time, it's winter, it's really dark, and you've never been through this graveyard um, at night. And you thought, well, you know, I want to save time. You go through the graveyard. And as you're going through the graveyard, you hear something up in front of you. And when you look in front, directly in front of you is Leatherface. And you're like, uh-oh. And then you look to the right, and you see... Jason. There you go. You see Jason from Friday the 13th. You look to the left, you see Michael Myers. And then you look behind you, and there's Freddy. And so you're kind of a bit worried right now, I, I imagine, in your head. You'd be like, oh. an understatement. Yeah. So, but you realise they're not actually looking at you. Oh. They're looking at each other. So you go and duck and hide behind a gravestone. And you're kind of peeking out and seeing what's happening. And they're just having a mad fight. All four of these iconic killers are having a mad fight. Now, you're going, and I want to imagine that when the dust is settled and when all the smoke is cleared, there is one survivor. Three of these guys have died, never to be resurrected again, and there is one survivor. You're going to choose the survivor. Take the membership card and hold it this way, and you're going to go back and forth like this. And then when you feel the urge, you're going to drop it onto one of the killers. Okay. And you can take your time. It's totally up to you. You're going to go back and forth, and when you feel like it, you're going to drop it on one of those killers. Are you sure? Yep. So don't want you saying later on, I made you pick that card. Are you sure you want uh, Freddy? Yes. Do you think Freddy would be the survivor if there was a fight between these four guys? Oh, yeah. You think Freddy would be the survivor? Arizona. Well, here's the thing. He did survive. He was the survivor. You're correct. You made the story absolutely perfect. Oh. And I'll prove it to you. <clears throat> because Leather's face, well, you can see from the other side, he was dead. And uh, Jason, he was dead. <laughs> and Michael Myers, he was dead. And the only survivor in this massacre was Freddy, which is why it says on his card, in your horror movie, Freddy kills all. What? Well done, man. That wasn't me. That was all you. So there you go, that's Fright Night. Uh, after I finished filming, Jack was like, oh my gosh, that is the best trick ever. Uh, he loved this. And, and it always gets that sort of reaction. Um, I love, I love, I love this trick. I think I love it. No, I do. I love it even more than the original Killer Elite. I think that the props are a little bit nicer. I think that the revelation is a little bit stronger um, without getting too much into method. The, the, uh, the other thing is, you saw the membership card, right? The other thing that they supply, as well as the membership card, they supply a small version that you can put onto your key fob. So you can actually have a small version that you put on your key fob so you can give them the keys and you can achieve the same thing. I actually prefer the membership card because the wallet that they designed, and this is a custom designed wallet for this routine, the wallet that they designed is wonderful because it holds the, uh, it holds the membership card, it holds the movie posters, it holds absolutely everything. So it's all completely self-contained. You put it into your pocket, you're ready to go. It's an instant reset. You can immediately go into it again later on in the night if you want to. And it is incredibly easy. If you don't know the method to the original Killer Eat and therefore um, Fright Night, the method is self-working. There's hardly anything to remember. 
All you have to do is focus on presentation. Now, that's the important thing that you need to understand about this trick. It's not a drawback. It's not a limitation, but it's something that you need to be aware of. This is something that requires the audience's attention and it requires them to listen to what you have to say. This isn't something that you can kind of, you know, those gigs like where everybody's running around and you've got to get their attention quickly. And it's kind of a case of wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. This would not work in that sort of gig. You need to get people's attention and you need to get them to be invested in the story that you're telling. So you need to be aware of the type of gig that you can perform this in. And you can perform it in a lot of different gigs, but I wouldn't use it as your opening trick. Uh, this is one to do after you've done a couple of other routines and you, that people are invested. It would also make a really great mid trick in a parlor show uh, or even a stage show, to be perfectly honest. And it's a wonderful pipe and slipper moments when uh, you kind of you've done your gig and the booker comes up to you at the end and says, thanks very much. And you've got one more. Well, actually, yeah, let me show you this. It's great in that regard. So yeah, it's called Fright Night. I highly recommend it. I love Killer Elite, and I actually prefer Fright Night to Killer Elite just because of uh, uh, the quality of the props, and also I think that the outs make a little bit more sense. It's a little bit more organic with the membership card. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love this. I'm gonna give this, uh, you know, I'm gonna give it 100%. I think this is really good. It's definitely going into my act. I love that I can throw it in my close-up case. And that's the other thing, you know, sometimes, I'll just quickly mention this. You know, sometimes you buy yourself a trick and you practice it and you learn it and you do it and then you don't do it for a couple of months. And so you go back to go and do it again and you've completely forgotten the method and you have to relearn it. That's not the case with, uh, with, with Fright Night. Once you know what's going on, uh, even if you don't do it for two or three months, you'll remember it instantly. It'll take you 10 seconds just to remember and then you'll be able to do it again. So it's one of those tricks that you can throw in your case. The instinct here is to do it just at Halloween. But as I say, these characters are so iconic, you could do it all year round. And uh, you've got that wonderful hook. So yeah, I love it. I'm giving it 100% and it's highly recommended. Okay, so the next trick that I'm going to be looking at is an Alakazam product and it is actually Ace Magic Studios. Uh, and this is Career Choice uh, by Gary Sumter and Steve-O Watson. Now, what is career choice? Well, you know what? First of all, what I find very interesting is that you can always, even though Ace Magic Studios are now part of the Alakazam brand, you could not tell me what trick is being created by which part of the company. And I'd immediately be able to tell you which trick is a Ace Magic Studios trick and which trick is a, is an Alakazam trick. They have very different styles, which I think is why they work so well together. Um, a lot of the time, the stuff that comes out through Ace Magic Studios, it's more, I don't want to say gimmicky because that's not the word I'm looking for, but it's kind of more visual. Um, and this, this is the perfect example. So what this is, is, is it's a card effect for kids with an awesome magical giveaway. But to be honest, I actually think that you could perform this for um, adults and have no problem. In fact, I do actually perform this on Jack in the, uh, in the live performance. You're gonna see it in a second. What you get here, and uh, I really like this. Uh, so you get two decks of cards and you're gonna see why in a second. You're gonna have, um, uh, you're gonna be giving away a card at the end of every performance. So at the end of every performance, you're gonna be giving away a card. Um, so one of these decks is a refill deck and it just gives you 52 cards so that you can do the trick and immediately, if you have a couple of these in your top pocket, you can immediately reset it, immediately reset it, which is really nice that they've thought that through. Um, and then you've got the actual other deck, which is the actual trick. Now, the other thing that I like about this is that the card box has been designed to look like a card game for kids. So you can say, hey, you can be anything, career choice, fun ideas for kids, a fantastic card game. So it now becomes very plausible that this is something that you just picked up in a shop and you wanted to show people this. Um, for sure, it works best for kids, but I think it would work for adults as well, especially if you do it a little bit tongue in cheek. Um, if you don't know what it is, I'm gonna roll the full performance first of all that I've done to Jack. Have a look at this performance and then we'll bring things back into the studio and I'll tell you what I think. 
and I'm here with Jack, and Jack's Hello. gonna help me with this. And uh, Jack, what I have here is I have, I got this from like the Entertainer, which is a toy shop that Thea and Ryan go into. And it basically, it's a career choice. It's to help kids decide what they wanna do for a living when they're older. Uh, you can be anything, career choice, uh, fun job ideas for kids. Uh, fantastic fun card games, you wanna be an explorer, a scientist, a doctor, a mechanic, even a king. Now you can with career choice. And I know you do this marketing thing in the company, but maybe you're getting a bit bored. Maybe you like a different career. So I thought we could look through these and, and, and see if there's another career that matches you. Because it's, it's basically, in essence, it's a deck of cards. But the backs of the cards are kind of really weird because the back of each one of these cards has a different career on it. So this has got hairdresser, we've got singer, racing car driver. I bet that'd be a really cool job, that'd be wouldn't a thrill. it? Um, professional YouTuber. I know how that person feels, to be honest, right now. <laughs> uh, professor, an electrician. A police officer, I reckon you make a pro footballer. That one's for you, Luke. What do you reckon? Yeah, you why not? Pro footballer. Chef. Dog poo picker upper. I'll do that every morning. So. All right, okay. So you've already got, you see, you've already got. Uh, <laughs> it's a part time job, that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sales assistant. Famous writer. You can be a fan, not just a writer, but a famous writer. Um, ironically, you are a bit of a writer because you do all the content, aren't you? So oh, that yeah. maybe fits you. Uh, chocolate taster. Pro gamer. Oh, Can you yeah, imagine oh, just right. sitting around playing games all day? That'd be fantastic. That'd be amazing, Twitch, isn't it? A teacher, that'd be the worst job ever. <laughs> Mechanic, Olympic diver, that's oddly specific. Um, doctor or nurse, builder. Yeah, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. I mean, there's, there's circus clown. I could see you being a circus clown. Thanks. I could see you being a circus clown. I think you'd make a great circus clown. Artist, TV presenter. Do you think you'd be a TV presenter? Oh, I can't lie to people, so probably not. Okay, probably not. Anyway, we're going to see what job you're going to do. Okay, so um, as I go through, any card you want to, just touch one. Okay. The Four of Hearts. Now, it's really important that, because this is this is like a big choice. I mean, it's really important. You can be anything you want to be. Are you sure you want the Four of Hearts? Yes. You definitely want the Four of Hearts. Absolutely. Because you can be a hairdresser if you want to be, and a hairdresser is a really good position. If you want to be a hairdresser, the point is, if you want to be a hairdresser, you can be a hairdresser. Oh, I'm good. You don't want to be a hairdresser. So you ended up on the four of hearts. Let's see what you ended up on. A magician! Oh, God. You're going to be a magician. You'd make a great magician. You'd make a great... You'd make an awesome magician. And it's kind of a bit of a weird coincidence that I'm doing a magic trick for you. And you end up... You know, that new career choice. New career choice. I can even teach you how to be a magician. But the thing is, you have to learn how to do magic. Because if you're a hairdresser, you'd have to learn how to cut hair. Yep. If you were a racing car driver, you'd have to learn how to do the whole racing car thing you have to learn how to do this stuff so i'll tell you what hold your hand out for me i'm going to pop your four of hearts right there on your hand okay yep and if you're going to be a magician you have to do magic so what i want you to do is wave your hand over and make the most magical noise you know Ooh. wow he's a natural and now that four of hearts has changed into a magician certificate what a magician certificate this is to certify that you are now a real magician i'm going to put your name there which is jack i'm going to initial it down here because i am in the inner magic circle don't you know and now or an associate don't want to get that wrong and now you can have this you can put it up on your wall and anytime somebody says what do you want to do with your life you can say i want to be a magician Oh, I'm good to me, CV. There you go. Yeah, you did. So how fun is that? I'm telling you right now. I am. I'm telling you right now. If you work in a family restaurant or you work in venues where there are going to be kids on a regular basis, let's say you are a wedding performer and you're always going to have that table where there's uh, kids at a wedding, or you're a family restaurant performer and you've got lots of families coming in, this is absolutely. 100% worth its weight in gold. Because first of all, it's a very interesting hook. What do you want to do when you're older? I know from my kids, Ryland is eight, um, at nine in a couple of days. Thea is uh, is six. And, and the two of them are constantly talking about what they want to do when they're older. Um, you know, oh, I want to be a magician. I want to be a footballer. I want to be whatever it may be. So this is something that kids are uh, kind of... Uh, uh, this is something that kids talk about all of the time in school and outside of school. So it's a really interesting hook. And then you've got the, you've got the comedy bit of when you actually start showing some of these 
Jobs, professional YouTuber, dog poo pip corrupera. You know, there's, a, there's funny jokes in there. There's funny um, careers in there that kids will just immediately lose it over. And that's half the battle when you're performing close-up magic for kids. You want to do two things. You want to make it so it's engaging for the children. And, and you do that by not doing your 47-phase ambitious card routine. But also you want to make it so that the adults are invested in it as well. Because if the adults are switching off, you haven't done your job right. And this is perfect because if adults are watching it, they'll enjoy it. If kids are watching it, they'll really get into it. And I love the fact that they can pick any card. Now, the card picking procedure in here, when you saw the live performance, I just spread through and got them to touch one. There's two different ways of doing that procedure um, because you are limiting their choices in a very clever way. And that's the one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is by getting them to name a card. Now, you can't just get them to name any card. There is a small amount of procedure with a tiny amount of equivoke that nobody will ever really spot. So you ca I prefer the whole spreading out and just getting them to touch one, especially with kids, because with adults going down this thing of, right, I want to imagine a deck of cards. Would you like the black cards or the red cards? Okay, I, I think that might be a bit too much, depending on the age of the kids. Uh, so I actually prefer to just spread them out and just get them to touch a card, but the choice is for sure yours, right? It, it's nice that they've gone through both different options. The tutorial on here is very well done. It's Harry Nardi and Steve-O going through absolutely everything in depth. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and, and I love that moment at the end. Where, I mean, it's a nice, if it was just picking a card and it's Magician, it'd be a nice bit, it'd be, but it wouldn't be worth the price of this trick. However, having that moment where they have the, uh, you know, the Magician card and then you put it in their hand and it changes into a certificate that you then put your name on, uh, you put their name on, that's killer. That's killer. Those kids are going to keep that certificate forever. They're going to show it everybody. And that's why I love this so much in a restaurant as well, because it's a great giveaway for kids. Uh, part of your job in a restaurant is to try and get people to come back in and come back in and come back in. And one way you do that is by giving out souvenirs and encouraging the kids to come back in. It's that kid factor. You know, the kid picks where the, where the adults eat. You know, we don't go, me and Sarah, we don't choose where we eat anymore. Ryland and Thea decide. So uh, having that giveaway is really really nice i really like that and they've priced it so that it's affordable to get refills so it's not like uh you know a cuban bottle that you're only going to do once uh this is something that you can do over and over again all night and you can use this as part of your pitch to your restaurant and say you know what every kid that comes in i'm going to give them a little souvenir they're going to get their own magician certificate this is going to be really cool blah 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 so yeah i really like this i've never seen anything quite like this before um you know when I do kids shows I give away a certificate in the kids show because it's a great thing to give away I love the idea of giving away a card that's also a certificate and you changed it by magic I love everything about this it's not going to be for everybody if you're not a person who performs with kids you might not want to pick this up even though I do think it would work for adults um, but if you're in a family restaurant, if you're a wedding performer and you want something special for the kids' table, if you're, uh, you know, perform, because that's the other thing. A lot of close-up performers, they struggle performing for kids. They struggle thinking of material to perform for children. Um, it's like, oh, what shall I perform for kids? What shall I do? Well, this is something that you can do that's specifically for children. But as I say, from an important point of view, the adults that are watching this are going to be invested in it as well. So this is great. It's getting 95% from me. I'm definitely going to do this on a review show revisited in the future. It's highly recommended. Let's get on with the next review. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at is another Alakazam product, obviously, as it's an Alakazam review show special. And this one is another one of their dark range. And obviously, when you think of the dark range, there's only one name that comes to mind, which is Jamie Dawes. Now, Jamie is incredible. Um, he's back, you know, doing a more darker, macabre type of trick. The last thing I saw of Jamie's was Guess, which was very light and very fluffy and very uh, kind of upbeat. Uh, this is this is back to classic Jamie uh, 100 percent. And, and what it is, basically, it's another trick that relies on storytelling. And the first I'm going to show you a performance of this in a minute for sure. And the first thing that you're going to you're going to say to yourself is you're going to say, oh, that's a great trick for Halloween. But trust me, this is a trick that will work all year round. This is a great storytelling trick. In fact, it would work really well in the same set as Fright Night, to be perfectly honest. Completely different routine, 
but similar sort of premise in that there's this interesting story that you tell. And interestingly, you're going to see a performance in a minute to Luke. And Luke said to me afterwards that he's watched hundreds of tricks. He's a layman. He has no idea how anything works. He can't even shuffle a deck of cards. But uh, he's watched a lot of magic. And he said to me afterwards, he said, that's one of the best tricks I've ever seen you do. Uh, and I'm not normally a storyteller. You know, I don't normally do the storytelling style of tricks. This is full on storytelling. Um, and and maybe, that maybe, maybe I should start doing more storytelling tricks if that's the reaction that I got from Luke. But it's, um, you tell a story about the Salem witch trials and you tell a story about how to tell uh, if, a, if somebody was a witch or not. And then you, you, you bring this character into the story and then you start talking about everything. It's really interesting. The, the best way for me to do this for you is to show you a full performance, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you a full performance that I did, of, uh, I did to Luke. And then when you see that full performance, uh, I'll then tell you what yes. I think. I'm here with Luke. How are you doing, Luke? I'm good, Bob. Now, I know that Jack is into horror movies. Are you into horror movies as well? Yeah, I guess. Not, not as much as Jack. Have you ever, like, spent any time, like, researching or looking into, like, the, the witch trials? No. The whole idea was, like, hundreds of years ago, people used to think they were witches, mm -hmm. okay? And a lot of the time they weren't witches. They were just, like, doing what we would think today as medicine or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, but they used to think they were witches and they had these <coughs> trials to try and find out if people were a witch or not. So if you're suspected of being a witch, they would do one of two things. This is the test. Do you know what the test, the test is? No. This is crazy. It's called the Salem Witch Trials. There's, there's a test, right? The first test is they take the suspected witch to the top of a cliff and throw her off the cliff. Right. If she, if, uh, she flies, she's a witch. If she dies, she's innocent. Oh, nice. <laughs> so True story. Now, the other way the witch trials went were with the dunking. Have you heard the dunking? Yes. Okay, well, the, the, the idea of this is you take her to a lake, take the witch to a lake, put them in a chair that dunks them in the water, right? Mm. And the whole idea is you dunk them in the water and hold them underneath for like 20 minutes or something. When the chair is brought back up, if she's still alive and she was able to breathe underwater, she's a witch. If, however, she died, she's innocent. So that's the Salem Witch Trials. Yeah. And this person here, uh, Bridget Bishop, she was like the boss of the witches. She was the head witch. She was the witch that all the other suspected witches looked up to. Now, she wasn't really a witch. She was uh, eventually killed, and she was killed uh, for being a witch. But, I mean, this is why they thought she was a witch. She wore red. Right. So, you know, obviously you're going to be a witch if you, were, if you wear red. She had more than one husband. We don't know if it was at the same time or not, but she had more than one husband. And, uh, and, and also she had late night parties at six o'clock in the afternoon. Right. She seemed excited. I know, right? Yeah. So th this is her. And all the other witches called her the given. Right. Because they, they thought that she was going to come back and, and save the witches and that sort of thing. Anyway, this isn't just a magic trick. It's a history lesson. Nice. We're going to see. I'm going to give you the power to determine whether people are alive or dead, whether we're going to kill them or whether we're going to save them. You can be kind of like the witch finder general. Okay. Okay. Um, so we'll put Bridget down here for a minute. And uh, I've got uh, these, all these cards have got names on them, right? I want to imagine uh, that one of the, well, uh, I want to imagine that this guy here, uh, this person here, Mary Black, she's an angel. Okay. She, she lives. Oh. And this person here, Sarah Bassett, devil, dies. Okay? Yeah. You're going to make all the decisions. Angel pile, devil pile. Okay? So we'll take these two cards. And we have, uh, we have Daniel Andrew. And we have Andrew Carrier. One of these is an angel. Right. The other we're going to bury. Who do you think the angel is? Are you sure? Yeah. We'll bury the other one. How do you feel? Do you feel confident in your choice? Um, yes, of course. Well, let's try these two. So we've got uh, Elizabeth Carey, and you've got Edward Bishop Jr. Which one? This time a devil. Which one is the devil? Which one's going to die? That one there? On the devil pile? Yeah. We'll bury the other one. How confident are you feeling about your choices? So confident. So confident. I can tell there's an air of confidence about you. We'll do it again with these two. So what we have here, we have Mary Barker and Sarah Cole. Which one is an angel? Which one's going to live? That's the angel. Yeah? Yeah. We'll bury the other one. And again, do you feel do you feel confident? 
Yeah, I'm fairly bored. Let's do these. Choose, yeah. Rachel Clinton and George Burroughs. Which one's the devil? Let's go for George Burroughs. He's the devil? Yeah, he is. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. And boom. Okay. Up until this point, you've been deciding the fate of one person. Yeah. This time, I'm going to get you to decide the fate of two people. So we have John Alder and we have Sarah Buckley. One is an angel, one is a devil. One lives, one dies. Which one goes in the angel pile? Which one goes in the devil pile? Angel. Devil. Devil. Now that was the uh, the devil pile, so we'll mm -hmm. put devil there, angel there. How do you think you're doing? Right. We'll do the same with these two. So we've got uh, William Barker Jr. and Hara, Hannah Bromage. Sounds French. Hannah Bromage could be the devil. Why, well, because she's French? Well, I can't be trusted, can I? <laughs> okay, devil pile. And over here... Angel. Yeah. Okay. So how do you think you did? I mean, obviously you made all the choices. You decided where you decide these cards here. You decided which ones were going to be buried and and and, and which ones would end up here. Yeah. Uh, you decided on pretty much every, same with here. You you know you, I, I didn't tell you uh, to put this person in this pile or that, but you made all the decisions. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So this is the uh, this is the pile with uh, the given with with the. Uh, the head witch. That's the angels and that's the devils. And you made all the decisions, you did absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you, but there's actually letters on the other side of these cards. And it's really interesting that you made all the choices that you did. Because over here we have A, N, G, E, L. So you made all the choices. Over here, what? D, <laughs> E, V, oh, yeah. I, L. And over here, these cards were the ones that you chose to bury with uh, sure, Bridget yes. Bishop. Do you remember what I called her? The Given, right? The Given, yeah. G, I, V, E, N. Well, I'm really that, glad you made all those choices. <laughs> <laughs> okay, isn't that a killer ending? Like an absolutely killer ending. I'll be completely honest, this fooled me completely. I had no idea how this worked. Um, Jamie Dawes has a habit of fooling me over and over again because the guy is just a genius. Uh, this is no, um, this is, this is, this, there's no difference here. It fooled me again. Um, and I love the revelation at the end when you, when you, uh, you turn the cards over and it's angel and devil and then given. It's really cool. I mean, really, really cool. The night, right, let's talk about some of the positives because there's not really any negatives. I'll tell you the negatives first of all, because there's very few. The one negative is you are going to have table space. This is not a walk around trick. You are going to need a fair bit of table space in order to present this routine. You're not going to need a special table covering or anything like that, but you are going to need a fair bit of space. That's the first thing that you need to understand. The second thing is this has the same limitation as Fright Night in that it's not something that you can do at a really busy wedding where everyone's running around and you've got to grab their attention and do something hyper visual to get them to listen to what you say. This is something that you do when you've got a little bit more time with people and they're invested in your performance. Now that can be a restaurant. I've, I've worked restaurants in the past where it's kind of, uh, you, you, you have more time to sit down and talk to people and, and do more of these kind of formal style routines. Definitely for sure this will work at a, cab, uh, at a parlor show. Uh, and it'll also work, you know, there's lots of places where this will work. This would be a great bar trick as well. Um, there's lots of places it'll work, but you do need to get their attention. And like I said before, with Fright Night, this would make a great sort of pipe and slippers trick at the end of the night when the booker comes over and you show them one more thing and you tell this wonderful story and everyone's invested in what you do. Those are the only two negatives, in my opinion. And they're not really negatives, but it's something you need to be aware of. In terms of positives... First of all, this is pretty much an instant reset. When you know how to reset it, you can just pick the cards up and reset it almost instantly. And Jamie gives you a very easy way of remembering how to reset the trick. Second of all, it's completely and totally self-working. Jamie has eliminated all of the moves and even when you have to displace something, he's done it in a very organic way that doesn't require any sleight of hand, which is genius. It allows you to focus on the performance, uh, which, which is great. The next thing is there's no memory work. 
Uh, I watched this and I was able to remember how to do it immediately. I thought that there would be a lot of, okay, you need to remember this, you need to remember that. But because of how the trick works, the two piles that you're making kind of serve as a mnemonic for what you need to be doing. So there is no memory work at all in this. Uh, you have to remember one, two displacements at the end, which is like literally moving one card and that's it. Outside of that, there's no memory work, which I th think is important for this style of routine. Next, uh, the presentation just makes absolute sense. A lot of these routines live and die by how good the presentation is. And a lot of the time it's kind of woof woolly. This is as you would expect with the Jamie Dawes trick. The presentation is absolutely on point. And when I was doing this, Luke was literally hanging on my every word. Uh, and you can present it in lots of different ways. You can kind of go more dark like Jamie. You could go upbeat if you wanted to and go, hey, you know, these witches, you know, do you know how they decided if you're a witch or not? This is insane. Let me tell you what they did. So you can kind of pitch it in a different way depending on your performance style and your character. But the hook to this trick is really strong. Really, really strong. So there you go. And uh, it takes up very little pocket space. It's on the nice Alakazam Pro size cards, which are good, but they still fit into a top pocket or into an inside pocket. So, you know, you've got, um, you get yourself a nice big envelope, stuff them in, you're good to go. So this is really good. I really like it. It's typical Jamie Dawes. I don't think I've ever seen a bad Jamie Dawes trick. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to find one one day. I'm sure maybe when he was very, very young, he put out a really terrible trick. I don't know, but I haven't really ever found one. But this is typical Jamie. It's absolutely brilliant. It's highly recommended. I'm giving this 92%. And uh, you saw the performance. If you like what you saw and you want to be able to do that, then buy it. There are no surprises. You saw what I did. The tutorial is exceptional. Within half an hour, you'll learn. You'll be able to do it. You'll be showing it to people. It's that good. Okay, so the final review that I'm going to be doing today is of the Sweet FA Deck Plus. Now, the Sweet FA Deck, I actually reviewed uh, many, 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 many years ago. Well, not many years ago, but many months ago, probably about a year ago now, on the Ace Magic Studio Review Show Special. I did a review of a lot of Ace's products, and one of the products I reviewed was the Sweet FA Deck. Now, this is the Sweet FA Deck Plus. So it's rebranded to Alakazam, and it has changed significantly. Now, as it says here, guaranteed laughs, that's true. No thin cards, that's true. No rough and smooth, true. Instantly reset, true. Different card every time, true. Easy to learn, true. Pure entertainment, true. What this is, this reminds me, from a methodology point of view, this reminds me a little bit of the career choice trick. Because the method behind this and the method behind career choice are very similar. Um, it's the, it's it's a totally different trick. Like you would you could literally do the sweet FA deck after the career choice trick, and it, it, you know it wouldn't look like you're doing the same trick twice. It's a different outcome. It's a different trick. But met, from a method point of view, it's the same. Um, and so everything they say on the back of the box here also applies to the career choice trick and one thing that i never actually mentioned in career choice which is true and it's also true of this it's a different outcome every time that's important especially if you're working restaurants it's a different outcome every time it's not the same card over and over again it's a different outcome every every time which is really really cool so what is the sweet fa deck and what is the plus version? What makes it different? Well, first of all, I'm going to do a full performance of the Sweet FA deck so you can see exactly how it plays. Let's have a look at that right now. Uh, what I have here is a prize deck. Win a prize every time. Uh, what will you win? A fantastic fun card game for one to four players. I found this in a, uh, like a, like a, you know, like those weird little shops, gadgety shops and yeah. stuff like that. I found it in there. I'm always picking up stuff like this and I think, well, maybe this would make a good magic trick. And I picked this up and it's kind of interesting because it's a deck of playing cards and it is just, you know, like a, a, a just a, a, just a normal deck of playing cards as you can see. But what's interesting about these cards is they all have prizes on the back of them. Oh, okay. Interesting prizes. So, I mean, look at that one right there. Uh, 300 pounds in cash. 
Nice. Not bad, right? Now, here's what... So, that's euros, I think, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like yeah. Uh, euros. Now, here's what's going to happen. There's prizes on the back of each one of these, right? And in a second, I'm going to give you a choice of a card. And whichever card you have, I will honour that prize for you. Okay. Even though this is a game that you can get from the shops, I will honour the prize for you. So, this one would be 300 in cash. A thousand pounds of Amazon vouchers. $300 in cash. A thousand dollars of Amazon vouchers, thousand pounds of Amazon vouchers, three hundred pounds in cash, seven nights in Las Vegas, a, a seventy-five inch flat screen TV, Cabbage chocolate for a year, afternoon tea at the Ritz. I mean, there's some uh, all-inclusive holiday to Barbados. I will honour this for you, man. Brand new fitted kitchen. There you go. A speedboat. Ooh. You could have your own speedboat and going up and down the canals. Um, <laughs> Cartier diamond earrings. Nice. You could give them to Sam. Yeah, I could do. Give them yeah. to Sam. Probably sell them. Crater, yeah, probably make more money. Crater champagne. A home cinema assist. I mean, the list goes on. A Kenyan safari experience. Hey, I mean, come on. Lifetime supply of Prosecco. Although, <laughs> whoever's giving you a lifetime supply of Prosecco has never met your girlfriend. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Louis Vuitton luggage cake. The, the, the point is, it goes on and a, a luxury spa weekend for two. We could we could go on and on for a mortgage paid for a year. Blah 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 blah. So whatever prize you get, that's what uh, that's what I will honour for you. Okay. Right, okay. So uh, which one would you like? I'm just going to go through. You can have any card you want to. Stop. Yeah, the five of spades. Do you want to change your mind? Because this is important. Because you can have literally any prize that you want. If you want to stick with the five of spades, that's fine. We can go, we can go for any of them. We'll stick. You'll stick. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of bullseye here, isn't it? Yeah. Are you sure you'll stick? Because you know, in every single game show, isn't there? There's that moment where, um, you know, it's kind of like, do you want to, uh, do you want to, do you want to gamble? And they end oh, up gambling, and they lose everything. This is the card that you want. Yep. You could have won three hundred pounds in cash. You could have won a seventy-five inch flat screen TV. You could have won your own speedboat, a Kenyan safari experience, a Louis Vuitton. You could have won anything. You could have won a brand new Mini Cooper. But this, Luke, is what you won. <laughs> fuck all so there you go okay so luke loved that one i mean it's it's the right time right price type of audience right i know that there's going to be people watching that performance and going if that's vulgar you should never do that that's horrible you should never tell your audience to fuck off that is disgusting this trick should be put in the same category as the sponge ding dong and I love cock. It should definitely never be used by a professional performer. And to those people, I say, have you ever worked a military base? Because I've got about 20 military base bookings over the next month at Christmas. And trust me, those guys are a challenge. And this is the sort of trick that you don't need to think about. You can go into that sort of environment. You can do this thing. You can play it up. I don't have to worry about uh, uh, slights. I don't have to worry about anything. I can just focus on presentation. And, you know, you get that wonderful moment <laughs> where you turn it over. And I guarantee you, and I know this because I've done the original Sweet FA deck. I guarantee you that you're going to have people going, yeah, yeah. this is the, going to be the trick that everyone's talking about. This right here is going to be the trick that everyone's talking about. It, but it's the right time, right place. You're not going to go to a family restaurant where there's some grandchildren, there's the uh, very upper class mom and, uh, uh, mom and dad, and then there's the grandmother and you go, Hello there, Granny. I'd like to show you a trick. Would you like to win a prize? Oh, yes, absolutely I would. Okay, blah, 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 blah. This is your car. This is what you won. Oh, that's disgusting. You, you, right time, right place. Understand your audience. Having something like this in your, in your uh, close-up case is important because you never know the environment you're going into. And this has saved my ass more times than I, uh, I am willing to admit. Uh, and the nice thing about this, this is not something that I would take and immediately do at every gig. However, what's nice about this is I can, I can go back to this without, I, I know the method. I could not do this for two years, pick this thing up and be able to do it immediately because I, I know the method inside out, upside down and back to front. I know exactly what's going on with this trick and it is going to be impossible for me to get forget because it's completely self-working. Now, what's the difference between that and the plus? Well, the difference is this. You get 26 cards you get a whole bunch of cards with a different outcome. So you can amend your Sweet FA deck. If you don't want that ending um, that would upset Granny, you can have an ending that says an amazing magic show. 
So if you're performing for a ver for an audience in a restaurant, for example, and there's kids there, you don't want to do the Sweet FA deck. You can have two versions of the Sweet FA deck, or you can you can very easily adapt the Sweet FA deck to have this finale. So you're going to get a prize, and th that then makes a great opener, because. You know, you can say, hey, you know, I'd like to give you a prize. You can have any prize. What do you get? Turn it over. An amazing magic show. Well, that's brilliant because I'm going to do your prize right now. Are you ready for your amazing magic show? Let's do this. And, uh, you know, it makes a great opener. It makes a great intro into you doing the rest of the show. Um, I do think that that would make a really good opener. The one thing that I would advise you to do is make sure that you've set the deck up correctly. You don't want to go to the table of seven-year-olds accidentally pulling out the other deck when you're meaning to do this deck. Please make sure that you don't make any mistakes there. Um, but just this amendment makes this deck even more commercial. It was commercial before, but for only for certain audiences. Now, with the ability to change it out and with the ability of being able to do a completely different ending that's very family friendly, it means that now you can do this for every audience. And depending on your character, depending on your performance style and depending on the audience that you're performing for, you can go in one of two different directions. So this is going to get 89%. This is great. It's look, Well, in my opinion, I'm not going to do the Amazing Magic Show thing. I think this would make a good opener and I could see loads of people doing this and, and, and killing with it. And I think that Ryland, Ryland hasn't seen this yet. He's going to be so annoyed that I've done a review show special on Alakazam without him again. But I'm going to show this to him, not the, <laughs> not the version I use. I'm going to show him the, the other version. And I think he's going to really dig this. I think he'll want to use this as an opera. I know what Ryland likes and what he doesn't like. I think he's really going to love this. And he loves the stuff that he doesn't have to worry about slights on either. So, yeah, I, I really like it. I'm going to give it, um, I'm going to give it, like I said, 89%. It's highly recommended. Uh, it's another really good trick on this review show special. So there you go, guys. That's another review show special in the bag. Here's the thing. I mean, I've just gone through four tricks. Each one of them is exceptional. You know, sometimes people say to me, oh, you know, you review a lot of Alakazam tricks. How come something from Alakazam never gets a bad review? And the reason is I've never actually, since starting the review show with Ryland, genuinely, I've never seen a bad Alakazam product. Now, there might be tricks that come out through Alakazam that you're not into for whatever reason. You know, I know that there's, uh, you know, that there's people out there, one or two people, not the majority, there's one or two people that didn't like gossip because of not wanting to carry a ripped out piece of magazine. Out, but, and that's fine. But you can understand it's not a terrible trick. It's not a half arse trick. It's the same with everything. Alakazam really think through the tricks that they bring out. Ace Magic Studio really think uh, think through the tricks that they bring out. And Peter Nardi, having, uh, you know, I've got to know Peter Nardi really well over the last year. And Peter Nardi is hyper aware of his brand. And he's really, really aware of um, the importance of his brand. People trust Alakazam because they know that when they get an Alakazam trick, it's going to be a good trick. Now, like I say, it might not be your thing. It might not be up your neck of the woods. It might not be your sort of thing. But you can't deny that it's going to appeal to a lot of people. Um, and these four tricks are a perfect example. Uh, you know, you've got you, all four of them have a place in people's acts. Doesn't mean necessarily it's going to fit into your act. But I'm telling you right now, all four of those I would happily take out and perform. 100%. Fright Night, I'm definitely going to do. Career Choice, I'm definitely going to do. Sweet FA, I've done already many, many times. The Given is the only one that I don't know whether I'll actually do. I'm, I'm going to give it a shot, but I'm not in an environment very often when I actually get a chance to perform that style of routine. Doesn't mean I don't like it, just means that potentially it might not go in my act, but I'm going to find out when I go and perform it. I am actually going to do it a couple of times and see if it fits and meshes with my character. But there you go. You want to see more videos like this? You know what you got to do. You got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Don't forget, I'm going to be back again on Monday. And on Monday, I'm going to be back with three videos. I'm going to be here with the shorts at two, a live at six, and at nine o'clock, I'm going to be here with a five by five. One more time, guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. I'll see you again soon. My name's Craig from magic TV.